Hi, this is a quick introduction to the recently added Kafka Stream support in Spring Cloud Stream. Starting with the 1.3 release of Spring Cloud Stream, that is part of the Ditmers release stream, Kafka Stream's integration is supported out of the box as a first class citizen with proper bindings for uh, Kafka Stream specific target types. So what this means is that now we can write Kafka Streams applications as Spring Boot microservices using the familiar patterns and building blocks exposed by Spring Cloud Stream. Things like the enable binding and stream listener and by using them you get immediate connectivity between your endpoints and destinations. It also brings the benefit of having all the out-of-the-box features already provided by Spring Cloud Stream in our stream processing application. For example, things like the automatic message conversion, data deserialization and serialization, etc., uh, can be now part of our end user uh, Kafka Stream application. Kafka Streams is a library provided by Apache Kafka. It is used for writing stream processing applications and it supports many well known use cases and paradigms in uh, streaming, um, such as uh, time based windowing, um, aggregation, joining, interactive queries, etc. The support for Kafka Streams in Spring Cloud Stream is provided in the form of uh, writing a processor type application with an incoming destination and an output destination. Uh, this uh, requirement sort of comes from the fact that Kafka Streams require a model. It receives data uh, from an input Kafka topic and then writes uh, data uh, into another output Kafka topic. So that model sort of nicely fits with the Spring Cloud Stream model of processor and therefore that is the only type of application that you can write with uh, the support. One benefit of using the Spring Cloud Stream support for Kafka Streams is the fact that now we can simply focus on the business logic part of the stream processing application and let the framework worry about all the uh, plumbing required for setting up the stream, starting and stopping the stream maintaining the life cycle, etc. So uh, in doing that, uh, it um, largely relieves the developers from worrying about any plumbing uh, necessary for setting up the stream and uh, let us simply focus on the business logic part of it. The uh, Spring Cloud Stream, uh, Kafka Stream support is uh, provided as part of the main um, Kafka repository here. Um, and the Kafka Stream support is actually added as a new type of binder called the case stream binder. So as you can see here, it is added as a new module in the GitHub repository for the Kafka binder. Uh, one uh, one uh, note to add here, the case stream support is uh, partly based on uh, the Spring Kafka project in addition to the core uh, Spring Cloud Stream, obviously. Uh, so Spring Kafka is another uh, project that gives a lot of integration points um, with uh, with Apache Kafka. Uh, so that project uh, is uh, is one of the foundations for the case stream uh, binder as well. The um, Kafka stream support documentation is uh, provided in the main reference documentation for Spring Cloud Stream. Um, so as you can see here, uh, here are the Maven coordinates for the new case stream binder. So all you need is uh, this dependency in your application. So this will bring all the other dependencies transitively. The documentation also uh, provides a few examples and uh, uh, runtime properties that you can use um, uh, with the Kafka Stream support. The Spring Cloud Stream samples repository uh, contains a few uh, sample applications that demonstrate the capability of the case stream binder. Uh, they are standalone Spring Boot microservice applications. Uh, the instructions are there for how to check them out and uh, run them. Uh, feel free to check them out and uh, run it in your local environment. Um, here is the case stream word count uh, sample that is uh, provided as part of the main reference documentation for the Kafka streams. So here, obviously, we adapt it into using the Spring Cloud Stream primitives for the Kafka stream support. So that's exactly the same application that we were looking before. Um, so this is a standard Spring Boot application. And um, uh, here is the underpinning of what it makes uh, a Spring Cloud Stream application. 
we are using the enable binding annotation with a new type of uh, interface called the case stream processor. Let's take a quick look at that um, case stream uh, processor interface. Um, so this is a very simple interface with two methods, one annotated with input and the other annotated with uh, the output annotations. Um, so the interesting thing here is that uh, the return type on these two methods are uh, case stream. This means that when uh, Spring Cloud Stream uh, does the binding, it binds with the proper Kafka Stream uh, target types, case stream in this case. And then when we use uh, uh, Stream Listener, for example, here, it gets the incoming case stream and then properly maps uh, to this method argument. And on the outbound side, the case stream is also properly mapped to the outbound endpoint endpoints. Um, so coming back to this example, this is a standard word count uh, example. So it basically receives data from an incoming topic as a line of text and then um, split them into individual words and count the individual words over a configurable uh, time window. And then that's all we do here, basically uh, send that data back to the output uh, destination. One interesting thing though here is that we are returning it as a POJO called word count here that contains the, the word and the count for that word and the uh, time window in which we are counting. So although we are returning it as a POJO, we are asking Spring uh, Cloud Stream Framework to convert that into JSON format by providing this output content type as application JSON. So this will uh, ensure that when our data is sent back into the outbound destination, it is converted as, uh, as a JSON text, basically. This application YAML is also used for providing a few uh, standard Spring Cloud Stream and Kafka Stream specific uh, uh, properties such as the input and output destination and uh, uh, things like that. So I have this um, uh, same project uh, checked out here. Um, I'm going to quickly um, build this uh, project and then uh, we are going to uh, run this as a uh, standalone Spring Boot microservice. Uh, so let's um, uh, run this um, as uh, like that. Um, so the the thing is that we are starting this application here. We didn't really pass any runtime properties or anything like that. That is because we are pulling all the properties uh, from this YAML file and that's the reason why we didn't have to pass anything. If your use case requires something else, make sure that you either change that in the YAML file or provide them as a runtime property, command line properties. Now, uh, uh, since our application started, we are going to verify that our application works. Uh, basically, we are going to send data into a Kafka topic and make sure that we get the counts uh, from the output topic. So here we are using the Kafka console producer tool. We are going to send data to the topic called words. And here we are using the Kafka console consumer. And we are trying to receive data from the topic called counts. All right, so I'm going to send some um, uh, text here. Um, yeah, so as you can see, uh, as we enter text here, we can actually uh, see the output uh, in JSON format on the right hand side. Um, so we are using a, a 10 seconds uh, time window here. Um, so as soon as that 10 window is expired, you see the counts get reset since we are sending the same text over and over again. Right, so here is how you run a standard um, uh, Kafka stream application written, in, written using Spring Cloud Stream uh, as a standalone application here. Right. Now we are going to take the same application and um, we'll try to run it uh, in Spring Cloud Dataflow. So Spring Cloud Dataflow is a layer that is sitting on top of um, Spring Cloud Stream. You can actually take Spring Cloud Stream applications and uh, take individual microservices and run it uh, as a single stream. So here I have my local uh, data flow server running. So here is a dashboard for the data flow 
I already imported a bunch of out-of-the-box applications. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to register our, uh, our application that we have here. Let me stop it here. And um, so our goal is to basically take this uh, jar file and then register in uh, Spring Cloud Dataflow first. So I'm going to register that application. Let me call it KStream word count. Um, and then uh, I'm going to get the file URL for that uh, Spring Boot Uber jar. Um, so as you can see here, so this is that same jar file. So it's the file location, file system location from my local file system. So the type is uh, a processor, right? So I'm going to register this now. So my application is now registered. So now let me go to stream. I'm going to create a stream. So the use case now is that a little bit advanced, in the sense that I want to create a stream that contains an HTTP source so that I can uh, post data to an HTTP URL and then um, let the case stream word count processor counts the information and then writes that data into a file sync. So that is the use case. So let me search for the HTTP source here. So HTTP source and then I want my case stream word count processor. Right, so that is there. And then I want my file sync. So here's the file sync. So let me connect uh, them so that HTTP source output goes into case stream word count processors input. Um, the output goes into file sync's input here. Right. So let me change a few more things. I want to make sure that I, am, uh, I need the port changed. Right. So on the file sync side, I want to send this data uh, to a directory called temp HTTP file and then the name of the file, let's call it as data, right? So that is there. Now I'm going to create it. So I can just simply call it as HTTP file. I don't want to deploy it now so that I can pass some data flow specific deployment properties. So I'm actually creating the stream right now. So the stream is now created. Now I am going to deploy the stream. So when I deploy, I want to uh, pass uh, certain properties for the individual applications in the stream. Um, the same properties that we saw in the YAML file, but reformatted in the data flow specific uh, formatting. Uh, so now I'm deploying it. Right. So the application, uh, the stream is now deploying. While that is getting deployed, let me go back to the samples repository one more time and uh, uh, talk about a few other things here. So uh, there are other samples provided. One interesting thing is this interactive query samples. Interactive query is a feature pro provided by Kafka Streams. So Spring Cloud Stream provides um, in integration points for running uh, applications that contain, uh, that require interactive queries. So uh, if you look at it, um, it's uh, pretty similar to what we did for the word count application. It receives data from, a, from an incoming uh, topic and then writing into an output topic. Um, but the interesting thing here is that we are using a special bean from a special bean provided by the Spring Kafka project called the KStream Builder Factory Bean. And this factory bean uh, gets you access to the actual Kafka Streams object. And then by getting the Kafka Streams object, you can actually get the store that is used under the hood and then, uh, and then execute queries on the store interactively. You know, this application is actually querying on a schedule, as you can see here. Um, so again, uh, check it out and uh, see if it uh, uh, fits your interactive query type use cases. Uh, so let's get, get back to our Spring Cloud Dataflow dashboard here. So now our stream is fully deployed. Um, so as it is deployed, now we want to run some tests. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, come back here and uh, here is my uh, temp location. So that directory is there. Um, so you might, we might see some data uh, because it probably uh, from our previous runs. Um, so I'm going to uh, use this curl command to post some data uh, to that HTTP source. So when I do that, I see the output 
uh, in the file sync here. So let's do that for some more time. Um, so it is using a larger time window of 30 seconds. So uh, as soon as that window is passed, you'll see the output gets, uh, the counts uh, get a, a reset. So the point is that now we made sure that uh, we created a stream that is containing um, uh, three different individual microservices, an HTTP source, a case stream word count processor, and a file sync. And we connected them using Spring Cloud Dataflow. And we made sure that we can run an end-to-end -end test, meaning we send data through the HTTP source and we verified that we saw data in the file sync, which means that our case stream word count processor processed the data properly. Uh, so although this is a, a trivially contrived example, um, I, 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 you can envision the fact that uh, there are other uh, data processing pipelines that can leverage this kind of model. Uh, so take it for a spin and uh, check it out and see how it goes. Thank you for listening.